Akumajo Dracula X, also known as Castlevania Rondo of Blood. This game was originally released in 1993 for the PC Engine CD console in Japan. While the PC Engine was available in America, though inexplicably renamed the TurboGrafx CD, this classic Castlevania title never made it outside the Japanese market during the console's lifetime. The game was critically acclaimed and the fans fortunate enough to play it seemed to love its unique approach to the classic Castlevania formula. In 1995, a radically redesigned pseudo-port was released in North America for the SNES under the title Castlevania Dracula X. Not staying true to much of the source material, this game was seen as an inferior entry into the series. It wasn't until after the success of Rondo's sequel, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and follow-up games that Konami finally released the game internationally. Castlevania Dracula X Chronicles came to the PSP in 2007 and featured a 2.5D remake of the classic game as well as an unlockable version of the original Rondo of Blood. In 2010, the PC Engine CD version of the game was made available in the Nintendo Wii's Virtual Console. This pre-Metroidvania entry into the series marks a turning point in the franchise, with the introduction of sub-weapon item crashes and the anime-inspired look that would become prevalent in later titles, as well as featuring voice-acted cutscenes and a heavier emphasis on story elements. It's no wonder, then, that many consider this one of the best games in the franchise. Let's see what's lurking in the creepy corridors of this game of legend. Transylvania, 1792. A century has passed since Simon Belmont, the legendary vampire hunter, defeated the dreaded Count Dracula and his dark horde. Though, even as the memory of Simon's tale fade into myth, a powerful sorcerer known as Shaft attempts to revive the fallen Dark Lord. Upon his reawakening, Dracula sends forth Shaft and his minions to wreak havoc upon the Transylvanian town people burning the nearby town, and even capturing several locals for use in dark rituals. In an attempt to draw out Richter Belmont, the latest vampire slayer, Shaft also kidnaps Annette Renard, Richter's love. Learning of Annette's disappearance and the return of Dracula, Richter sets out to rescue her and the others from the vampire's castle and put an end to Dracula's curse once and for all. Again. It might not be the most original narrative, but the novel edition of the anime-flavored cinematics adds some depth to the story while simultaneously showcasing the expanded storage capabilities of the PC Engine CD. But if I'm being honest, I've never played a Castlevania for the character development or gripping plot. All I need is a good challenge, fun boss fights, exciting music, and some interesting looking stages to destroy in search of hearts and meat. Speaking of interesting looking stages, let's talk about the visuals. The anime stylings of the main character Richter and the large and highly animated sprites of enemies and bosses are beautiful in and of themselves, and when combined with the multi-layered levels create a look that is truly something original. The levels of Rondo of Blood are a diverse collection of locales that pay homage to previous places visited in the Castlevania series. Stage 1, for instance, features a Transylvanian town that looks similar to the town's first scene in Simon's Quest and other locations like caverns and towers filled with tons of mysterious gears all make their appearance in this game as well as the iconic stair climb to the final confrontation. But besides the 16-bit take on the old 8-bit locations, there are several new stages that are unique to Rondo of Blood. Many looking quite good, if not always as visually impressive as Super Castlevania 4. My favorite of these new stages being Stage 5, The Ghost Ship. The atmosphere of the level lending itself nicely to the world of Castlevania, maybe with a touch of campiness, but the fun and campy nature of Castlevania has always provided a contrast to the tough boss fights and challenging gameplay. All told, the levels of this entry may not be the best looking of the side-scrolling Castlevania games, but with the diversity of the various locations and the numerous alternate stages to explore, there is no lack of creativity in the visual presentation of this game, and in fact, the influence of these visual elements still can be seen in the subsequent games such as Symphony of the Night and the various Game Boy Advance titles. Now, let's talk about the gameplay. The eight stages of Rondo of Blood are a series of challenging, but not too challenging, levels that increase in difficulty as you come nearer the end. Along with the level hazards and nerve-wracking enemies, the levels of Rondo of Blood are also home to tons of hidden heart ammo and meat-filled walls. You know, for healing. Like Castlevania III Dracula's Curse, this game has some non-linear elements as well, and exploration of the areas of the game comes with some real rewards. These include finding captives, gaining an extra playable character, stumbling upon one of the alternate paths, or gaining access to one of four completely different alternate stages. The choices that are made can lead to different boss encounters, depending on the path taken, and even a different ending depending on who, if anyone, was rescued by Richter. 
While we're on the subject of Richter, he comes equipped with some novel abilities that have since left their mark on the franchise. Besides the backflip and moonwalk ability, which are admittedly useful but for me not often utilized, the real show stealer is the introduction of the sub-weapon item crash. While still having series signatures of a left and right whip snap and the ability to use equipped sub-weapons by hitting up in the attack button, this game-changing ability adds a new layer of strategy to the gameplay of Rondo of Blood. Activating an item crash will result in large screen-filling attacks in exchange for large quantities of Richter's hearts. The effect and cost of the item crash vary between Axe, Dagger, Stopwatch, Boomerang Cross, Holy Water, and the newly introduced Holy Book. The crash itself can be used to avoid an attack and deal huge damage to a boss. Personally, I tend to favor the Boomerang Cross, but that's just me. The item crash ability would become a recurrent mechanic in later games, notably the GBA titles. The Bosses The boss fights in this game are varied and plentiful. With over a dozen bosses spread throughout the game, there's tons of opportunity to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some legendary monsters, both old and new. Each fight has unique mechanics and monster animations and never succumbs to feeling boring. The difficulty of the game's bosses ranges from a little tough to straight up hard, but never quite the controller-shattering self-torture of some other Castlevania games, with the learning curve being pretty reasonable of progressing through the bosses. Some of the alternate path bosses and later fights definitely will push your average gamer, but none feel impossible and many can even be killed in the first go. Notable boss fights are Shaft, having to fight the iconic Bat, Medusa, Mummy, and Frankenstein's monster before taking him on directly. Death, who's possibly the toughest boss in the game, with three phases to the fight and tons of sickles to dodge. Another noteworthy fight, although for different reasons, is the final boss encounter with Dracula himself. While being visually stunning and more than a touch reminiscent of the original Castlevania's Dracula fight, this boss fight feels almost too easy after squaring off with some of the more challenging big bads in Rondo. But with so many fights to choose from, I can't see harping on this one that's not bad per se, just the less than stellar climax. The Brand New Vampire Hunter Taking the time to explore the various mysteries of Stage 2 can lead to the rescuing of a brand new playable character, Maria. She might look cute, but don't let that fool you. She comes equipped with some magical animal friends and the ability to double jump. And while she might not take a hit like Richter, she can deal quick damage, run faster, and has unique items and item crashes in the form of extremely useful animal summons. She may be a departure from the playstyle most people associate with a Castlevania title, but she can definitely be a breath of fresh air at times. The only catch is that she's almost too powerful, and makes many of the better challenges in the game a bit too easy. If you're looking for challenge, then Maria might not be the best choice. But if you get stuck on a boss fight or a tough stage, she may be the right pick for the job. And as a bonus, Maria gets her own unique cutscenes for the character rescues and an in-game cinema that is a bubbly counterpoint to Richter's more serious ending. The Sounds Taking full advantage of the CD quality audio that was available to the PC Engine CD console, Rondo Flood features a great soundtrack. The songs of the game running the gamut from thoughtful orchestral pieces to intense rock and jazz infused remakes of long-standing Castlevania tracks. One of my favorites is the update of the classic tune Vampire Killer. Another is the track played during the Ghost Ship level, aptly named Picture of a Ghost Ship. Another standout title is the Clock Tower's theme, The Den. The songs of Rondo of Blood, while being a unique take on the franchise's music, retains the superb quality that people expect from a Castlevania game. In fact, the music quality of this game would serve to raise the bar in future titles, most apparent in its successor, with Symphony of the Night soundtrack being one of the best regarded in the whole series. Dracula X Chronicles Dracula X Chronicles was released in 2007 for the PlayStation Portable. It is a 2.5D remake of Rondo of Blood, featuring 3D characters and object models played against the 2D background. Most of the levels, bosses, and secrets from the original game are found relatively unchanged with the exception of a couple of additional bosses, which is always welcome in a Castlevania game. Also new is the English translation, newly rendered cutscenes and voiceovers, as well as a boss rush mode that lets you take on the many monsters of the game one after the other. The new look of the game also comes with a reworked soundtrack that serves to add some new blood to the original score. 
In addition to the redone version of the game, the original Rondo of Blood can also be unlocked with a new English title screen and a complete English translation. Another unlockable is the classic sequel to Rondo, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. The most noticeable difference between this and previous versions of Symphony of the Night is the re-recorded voiceovers and the ability to unlock Maria as a playable character. Overall, if you don't own a Wii, or even less likely a Turbo Graphics PC Engine CD, then the Dracula X Chronicles is probably the best way to experience Rondo of Blood, and definitely worth the PSM price for either the PSP or PS Vita version. The Final Word With this game now more accessible than ever, there's little excuse not to play this classic Mania title. It has challenging, whip-wielding action, some memorable boss battles, and enough secrets to make playing it more than once worth the effort. It still looks good, even decades later, and with the solid scoring has a powerful soundscape to match. There is no denying that it isn't as hard as other Castlevania games, and being sandwiched between two colossal games like Super Castlevania 4 and Symphony of the Night was overshadowed by those monumental titles. This game does, however, mark one of the last great entries into the classic platformer style of Castlevania before the more open-ended gameplay of the Metroidvania style took root. It is the missing link between the classic and newer games in the series, and serves as a good example of the former while providing some foreshadowing of the latter. It's a great game that I strongly recommend for any fans of Castlevania, and a true epitome of what it means to be a game of legend.